Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the Perth Show War Room. Um, slight apology at the start for not following up on the previous video. Uh, I've had to put the heavy terrain away and bring out some lighter polystyrene stuff. Uh, I've been getting some treatment recently for a serious illness, involved chemotherapy and some radiotherapy. So um, I'm going with lighter terrain boards at the moment, so it's easy for me to get them around. And so I've set up this uh, table, which we'll look at in detail in a minute. Uh, what we're looking at here is the Arnhem battleground from the Second World War, 1944, which was part of Operation Market Garden. This is based on the rapid fire, uh, rapid fire campaign guys. This is the the most recent one, uh, which you should just be able to see there. And this is the previous one, which again, many of us are familiar with. And I'm using in this battle, the rapid fire reloaded rules, which are excellent. And the rapid fire reloaded extra rules, which gives advanced rules, etc., and involves parachute drops, etc. So if you just take a look at the battleground from this direction, you've got Oosterbeek over there, over there in the corner. And we've got Arnhem here with a bridge in front of us there. But I'll take a closer look at the battleground now in some detail to give you a feel of what we're doing. It's set up at the moment just for visual purposes. I haven't started the game yet. I've just put some pieces out to see what they might look like on the table. And uh, we'll get the game underway once we've had a chance to tour the battlefield. But this particular video is just going to look at a battlefield tour for now and talk about some of the forces involved. So uh, let's take a look at the battleground. So what you can see here is the Oosterbeek area. This is the Hartenstein Hotel, which was the headquarters for the British Airborne troops when they landed around Arnhem. Over there in front of the camera is the Oosterbeek Gasworks and the famous Oosterbeek Church just over there. The church was the scene of the, sort of the last part of the perimeter defence before the British finally escaped over the river. Spoiler alert, the British didn't win this battle. Uh, and then we've got some key buildings around here. We've got here the uh, the home of Kate uh, to Horst, which became like a mini hospital field aid station during the battle. If you watch the film A Bridge Too Far, it's the sequence in which they use Laurence Olivier as a local doctor asking her if they can use her house. The actress uh, Liv Ullman plays Kate to Horst. That's the Tafelberg Hotel. That was used by a couple of different German generals before the battle as their headquarters. Uh, but was evacuated at the time of the landings because of the, the arrival of the British. We have here the Hotel Joanna. Uh, a smaller building, and then we have buildings around here to represent Oosterbeek, and here we have Oosterbeek Railway Station. Almost all of these buildings are from the uh, Raventhorpe Sentry range of buildings, so these are 20 millimeter resin cast buildings. And they, they all feature the ability to remove uh, parts of the building, so you've got interiors, etc. Can look at that in a, a later stage. Um, but some of them, uh, these for example, and this one, are scratch built buildings. Uh, built by various people, um, Mike Sewell and, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Mike Sewell and um, Dave Dalman. Uh, so nice selection of buildings there. Trees, the roads um, are from uh, the Last Valley and the terrain is total system scenic uh, polystyrene tiles with the, the green flock top on them. So that's the used to be area. The British landed over that way and were making their way up through used to be to get to the bridge. So this scenario is based on the sort of the grand manner approach to a battle. It's the charge of the British um, uh, battalions to try and get to the bridge. And they've got a pretty formidable task ahead of them. But we'll take a look at Arnhem from this view and then go through some of the, the buildings in detail that we've got over there. But um, even arriving in Oosterbeek, it's a bit of a trek for them to get over to Arnhem. And actually, for the purpose of this battle, my table is a 12 foot by 6 feet, so I've compressed the battleground. If you look at the scenario guides, you'll find that Colin Rumford and Richard Marsh are using a 16 foot long table for this sort of encounter. So here we have the, uh, the Arnhem uh, battleground set up. I've used um, a number of hardboard boards painted in grey to create the urban area base. You've got the bridge over in that direction. We've still got the ramp to finish on, the, on that for the, for the battle itself. But we've got one of the two churches that are in St. Varnum represented here. Uh, this is actually a, a, a Kibri uh, railway model, HO scale. And then we've got various buildings here to represent the area where General Urquhart was trapped in a building a bit like this one. We've got the diagonal road that comes up towards the end of the bridge that was a really vital fighting area. There is actually meant to be a St. Elizabeth a hospital model there, but I don't have that model, so I'm just using another model to stand in. And by the way, that's a really important point about wargaming. We're not all, all going to have all the right buildings for every encounter. You know, you, you would have 
an enormous supply of models that was the case so sometimes you just have to slot in the nearest appropriate model that you can find and there's a few buildings here general sort of dutch buildings a couple of railway model buildings some some uh, ruin model buildings because it's a big area to cover for wargaming purposes but it gives you that feel of a of a dense urban area which is going to be tough to fight through because the british would have to fight through building by building you might just be able to see in the forefront over there the brickworks where the germans stationed some guns i've put examples of those in there just now but as I say we haven't deployed everything yet we've just put things out just to give a visual feel of how the battle might go um, so this area here is quite a decent area to represent the Arnhem area but the bit I've compromised on in, in bringing the the table in a sort of compressed manner is sliced a bit off that end of the table sliced quite a large bit off that end of the table beyond the Hartenstein Hotel and I've compressed the distance between Oosterbeek and Arnhem. Now it's the best I can do with a 12 foot table but I'm hoping it'll still lead to a decent game. We'll have three battalions of Paris heading down this way with their support uh, echelons of uh, artillery, anti-tank weaponry, etc, etc, the recce squadron, we'll have a look at all that in a little second. Um, but it's still going to be a very tough area for, for that force to get through, even though it's been compressed. So here we are, and the first thing to look at here is we've got the Hartenstein, Hartenstein Hotel with um, a British parachute battalion with its supporting anti-tank weapons, support weapons, mortar, uh, etc heading up the road and ahead of them is the figures to represent the recce squadron. So if we just zoom in on a couple of these um, models just to give you a feel for the way that they are displayed and, and um, set up on their bases etc. You can see that they are really nicely detailed models. These are 20 millimeter models by Britannia and they form a great setup for uh, British parachute troops. They're very very sturdy troops and, and great to use on the war games table. So here we have the uh, British uh, recce squadron, uh, which was intended to dash ahead uh, in a sort of coup de grace and grab the bridge really quickly, one end of the bridge really quickly. Unfortunately, in real life, a large amount of this force was ambushed uh, over on this side, away from where they are at the moment, or on the other side of a railway embankment, and, and they lost a lot of the force there. But this representation of the recce squadron, you've got the, the jeeps with the, the machine gun weaponry and then a Polston cannon, a really powerful automatic weapon used to um, act as a main support weapon, the heaviest type of weapon they, the Paris carry along with their very light artillery uh, to support the troops in, in achieving their aim of smashing through the German lines. And then just a quick look here at some of the German forces lining up to form the first line of defence. Again, in the scenario, the German forces will appear slowly so it'll take them a while to build up their defence and depth, which may give the British, if they're quick enough, the opportunity to, to steal a march on the bridge. And then here on the bridge, a representation of some of the troops that uh, were Grabner's troops who tried to make a dash, a recce troop, tried to make a dash across the bridge and force the powers away from building. Again, as I say, I've just put them here for positioning purposes at the moment. They will arrive later in the game. But you've got some half tracks, you've got a... a a British armoured car that had been commandeered by the Germans and was used by Grabner himself, and then a couple of other armoured cars. So the aim here of this was this set of troops was to dash across. And it's a very famous scene in the Bridge Too Far where they get pelted on the uh, on the bridge with a famous order, bring up the Piat, and the Piat scores lots of hits, lots and lots of machine gun fire and rifle fire, causes a lot of the building, the, uh, the vehicles to, to burst into flames as a very famous sequence, both in real life. If you look at the, the aerial photography that was taken of the, the bridge shortly after the encounter, there's an awful lot of damaged German vehicles on there. It's a very famous scene and it works really well in the film A Bridge Too Far. So just a final look at the, uh, the table. Here is the, um, the full table uh, showing R&M and then looking back to Oosterbeek. Should be a really good game. I'm really looking forward to uh, to running it, um, and uh, we'll get some uh, reports up once I start running this of how the encounters go using the rapid fire reloaded rules. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Do please subscribe if you've enjoyed what you're seeing. There's some other videos to look at on the channel, and I'll see you next time.